As you're beginning to see, the data service is the heart of Couchbase Server. Let's dig a bit further into how these artifacts, known as data buckets, work. So, the data service exists to manage data buckets. Each data bucket is a single logical set of uniquely keyed documents, a key space, which is spread and replicated across however many nodes you need. These buckets are the source of data for your query, index, and eventing services. They are also the source for generating full text search indexes. And they are the source for the shadow data sets streamed onto analytics nodes to support long running, computationally intense queries. You're likely already familiar with the traditional relational database. In those systems, the top level container is called a database. In Couchbase, as you've seen, it is a bucket. Now, a bucket is an unstructured document container, again, perhaps more easily thought of as a key space, because the hard physical limits are intentionally few. Document keys must be unique, and the maximum document size is 20 megabytes. Now, in a database, values are structured within tables. In Couchbase, they are most commonly structured within JSON documents. And just as a table row represents an individual record, documents are commonly designed to represent a single record. So then, what's the equivalent of a column? Well, like-named fields within documents can be directly analogized to a column, though with some interesting possibilities. The same field name could be used across documents of different types, opening some interesting new possibilities for flexible data access. Now this notion in turn opens up the common design pattern of assigning an explicit type to each document. Do so, and a set of documents sharing the same type become, for many purposes, the functional equivalent of a table. Would it make sense to create another table for another entity of some form? No, create a new type of document. But always remember, though, that each document is potentially different. This flexibility in your data model opens a whole world of rapid development possibilities for systems engaging with rapidly evolving inputs and aggregations coming from many different systems. Because with Couchbase, your schema is defined by the data structures your code reads and needs, not enforced by the system in which it needs to write. So then why would you ever have more than one bucket? Well, you can have up to 10 in any given cluster, but there's no firm need to align buckets with applications the way you might with a database. Instead, buckets serve as the boundaries for different concerns. They are the level at which you define varying caching, replication, indexing, and security needs. They're also a useful boundary for meeting multi-tenancy requirements. So, data buckets are your mechanism for controlling caching and persistence. As we've seen, documents are cached first and persisted second. Each bucket shares a thread pool to handle its persistence. If incoming documents exceed cache capacity, less recently used documents are ejected either entirely or, if you choose, with the key and metadata retained to speed future access. Only uncached data is ever retrieved from disk, and then it's recached. Buckets also control replication to other nodes within a cluster via a shared thread pool. To ensure high availability, even on node failure, up to three replicas can be made of each document. Now, replicas never reside on the same node as the active document. Rack zone awareness allows group level control over your replica placement. If a node is added, removed, or fails, Documents are efficiently redistributed and rebalanced for the new topology in your cluster. Any replicas made active due to a node failure are re-replicated on another node. Couchbase supports three bucket types, Couchbase, Ephemeral, and Memcache. Couchbase buckets are the normal form, passing values to disk for persistence. Ephemeral buckets are also supported for fully in-memory data sets that are nonetheless queryable, indexable, and replicable. Couchbase also continues to support memcached, or memcached, however you prefer to pronounce that, as a bucket type for the narrowly focused caching scenarios that they support. The bucket type 
is designated during bucket creation. As we've said, buckets do not exist on any specific node. They are virtualized across all data service nodes in a cluster through a mechanism called vBuckets, or virtual buckets. Each bucket is divided into 1,024 of these virtual containers, evenly distributed across all data service nodes. As nodes join, leave, or fail over within a cluster, the vBuckets are rebalanced. The location of specific vBuckets is tracked in a cluster map which is regularly updated for all clients. So what have we learned? Now well, a data bucket is a logical key space of uniquely identified documents divided into 1,024 segments known as vBuckets and evenly distributed across data service nodes in the cluster. Data buckets are the control mechanism for caching, persistence, replication, and rebalancing. There are three types, couchbase, which persist to disk, ephemeral, which are full-featured buckets but do not persist to disk to optimize performance for certain scenarios, and memcached, for traditional narrow caching behavior. During read-write operations, document keys are hashed to determine which vBucket and node will hold the document. These locations are tracked in the cluster map, which is regularly updated on the client by the SDK. Next up, we're going to survey how the Couchbase SDK is used to access all these services. Come on back.